hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Welcome to a past HTC exam question video. What we're going to do in this video is cover all the past multiple choice questions from 2001 to 2010 for the DNA to protein chapter. While doing a second, I'll bring up the first question. There's about 14 questions in this video. Once I've covered the first question, once I've read it, you have about five seconds to pause the video. Once you pause the video, attempt the question, and then press play when you're ready. So the first question is, which of the following is true for a mutation that produces an allele that is dominant? A, it will ex be expected to cause death. B, it will be expected to spread more quickly through a population than a recessive mutation. C, it would give an observable phenotype in the heterozygous genotype. D, it would give an observable phenotype only in homozygous genotypes. When ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer for this one is C. The reason why A is wrong is because while sometimes it does cause death, it also can cause something beneficial. So it can be either beneficial or bad. It doesn't always cause death. B, it would be expected to spread more quickly. That's false. I mean, if it's dominant or recessive, doesn't make it spread more fast, uh, spread faster. It just affects the phenotype, not the genotype. So it wouldn't be spreading any faster. So B is false. D is false because it would give. So it says it gives only observable trait in homozygous genotypes because it's dominant. It's also going to give a observable trait in heterozygous genotypes. So it would give an observable phenotype in heterozygous genotypes. Correct. Yeah, B was, D was cr wrong, but it says only in. So C is the most correct. Next question. In 1940, Beadle and Tandem developed the one gene, one protein hypothesis. This has now been modified to the one gene, one polypeptide hypothesis. Why was this modification needed? A. All proteins are composed of more than one type of polypeptide. B. Most proteins are comprised of more than one copy of the same polypeptide. C. Many proteins are comprised of many of more than one polypeptide that may be the same or different. D. The number of polypeptides in protein is always the same as the number of genes specifying those polypeptides. And ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. All right, so in this case, the correct answer for this one is C. A is false because it says all proteins are comprised of more than one polypeptide. That's false. Some proteins only com are comprised of one polypeptide. B is false because it says most are comprised of more than one copy of the same polypeptide. It doesn't have to be the same. It can be a different one as well. So for example, hemoglobin has two which are the same and another two which are the same. So it's two. It's made of four polypeptides, two of which are the same and two which are from a different gene, made from a different gene. And D was false, because the number of polypeptides in proteins is always the same as the number of genes specifying those polypeptides. And the example of um, hemoglobin is we have actually we have two genes, one making the one type of polypeptide and the other gene making the other type of polypeptide. So it makes four polypeptides, but those come from four, uh, two genes. So D is false. C is correct. Next question. An experiment was conducted to examine the effect of ultraviolet radiation on the development of antibiotic resistance in a strain of bacteria. The table summarizes the outcomes of the experiment. And this is your table here. And this means, so a tick means resistant and a cross means not resistant. Which of the following statements best summarizes the stages in development of the new strain of bacteria that was resistant to antibiotics S? A. Hybridization, mutation, mass selection. B. Replication, mutation, natural selection, C, mutation, natural selection and replication, D, mutation, hybridization and natural selection. When you're ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer is C, because for anything resistant, first thing there has to be, there has to be a mutation. The mutation will allow it to survive. So because it survived, it has been able to reproduce so it will have been selected by nature, and then 
it has replicated itself. After it survived, it managed to replicate. So first mutation, then it will survive, and once it's been able to survive, it can replicate. So C is correct, and all the other ones are false. So steps involved in DNA replication and protein production are summarized below. Step A, DNA is copied and each cell, each new cell gets a full copy. Step B, information is copied from DNA and taken to cytoplasm. Step C, ribosomes read information and assemble protein. Step D, protein information is complete. This says the step is DNA replication and these three steps are protein synthesis. In which step would a mutation lead to the formation of a new allele? Step A, step B, step C, or step D? When ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer is A. And the reason why is because in this case, if we have a gamete having a different type of allele, then we're going to have a new allele. If in the other ones, if they have any problem happening here, it won't actually affect the next generation. Or the only time there's going to be a difference is if it happens during the DNA being copied. So if the new gamete that's being formed has a different, a different version of the allele or the gene. So it happens to DNA replication. So it's A is correct and the other ones are false. Next question is this one. Generally gametes produced by an organism will not be identical. Which of the following does not influence this genetic variability of gamete formation? A mutation, B sex linkage, C independent assortment, D crossing over and homologous chromosomes. When you're ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. So we know that mutations, independent assortment, and crossing over all affect the variability. So that leaves out sex linkage to be the one which is um, not affecting it. But in this case, it's asking us for the one which doesn't affect it. So therefore, B is correct. And the other ones all affect it. So therefore, don't answer the question. Sex linkage doesn't change our genetic variability. The other three do. Next question. Why is accurate replication of DNA important? A, it leads to cell differentiation. B, it maintains genetic information. C, it allows for evolution of species. Or D, it enables cells to modify their proteins. Are you ready? Pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer is B. So in this case, we need to have a accurate replication because that means our DNA won't be different from the original one and we won't have any random mutations that might cause us problems. So accurate application means that our genetic information stays the same, which is what B tells us. The other ones are all wrong. Differentiation is, is quite random. It has nothing to do with um, replication, DNA replication. Next question is, which two scientists were able to crystallize DNA to develop the first model of DNA? B. Lantantum, Darwin and Wallace, C. Franklin and Wilkins, and D. Koch and Pasture. And already pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer is C. Bill and Tantum had to do with the one gene, one protein hypothesis. That was wrong. Darwin Wallace had to do with natural selection. Cochran Pasha had to do with pathogens and the immune system. And so C, Franklin Wilkinson's, was correct. Which statement best describes the relationship between proteins and polypeptides? A. Proteins are composed of polypeptides. Polypep B. Polypeptides are composed of proteins. C. Proteins, unlike polypeptides, are composed of amino acids. D. Polypeptides, unlike proteins, are composed of amino acids. When ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer is A. Proteins are composed of polypeptides. B is false. Polypeptides are not composed of proteins. It's the other way around. C is false because proteins, unlike polypeptides, are composed of amino acids. It's not true. Both polypeptides are made of amino acids. If polypeptides are made of amino acids, then proteins are also made up of amino acids. That's why D is also false. So A is correct. Which process results in genetic variation of offspring? A. DNA mutation and gamma formation. B. Cell differentiation and gamma formation. C. DNA mutation and polypeptide production. D. Cell differentiation and polypeptide production. So when you're ready, pause the video and attempt the question.
Welcome back. The correct answer is A. DNA mutation and gamma formation are the two examples that cause genetic variation. Cell differentiation does not, so therefore B is false. Polypeptide production does not, so therefore C is false. And cell differentiation and polypeptide production do not, therefore D is false, so A is correct. Next question. The diagram shows the phenotypic changes in a population over a number of generations. We've got first generation, fifth generation, tenth generation, and twelfth generation. Which evolutionary concepts is demonstrated in the diagram? A. Convergent evolution. B. Divergent evolution. C. Transitional forms. D. Punctuated equilibrium. When you're ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer for this one is punctuated equilibrium. Punctuated equilibri equilibrium means there's a sudden change in the environment, which means there's a sudden evolution, and then that evolution quickly changes the species. So here we have first and fifth generation, up to tenth generation was all the same, more or less. Then we have one change, and from the tenth to twelfth generation, that change more or less took over. So that's punctuated equilibrium. Nothing to do with transitional forms, or conversion, or div divergent evolution. So D was correct. Next question is, which method did Rosalind Franklin use during her investigation of the structure of DNA? A. Protein sequencing, B. Monohybrid crosses, C. Computer modeling, D. X-ray crystallography. I'm ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer is D. She didn't, they did not use protein sequencing. That was to check up, to compare, like that was biochemistry. And they didn't have that when she was around, so A is false. Monohybrid crosses, that was Mendel, that was not her. Computer modeling, again, they didn't really have any computers back then, so it was definitely not computer modeling. It was X-ray crystallography. Next question is, which of the following shows DNA replication in the correct order? A, two DNA double helixes, goes in and strands separate, then the matching base pair up, and then we have a DNA double helix. B, DNA double helix, strands separate, matching pairs, Bases pair up, and then we have two DNA double helixes. C strands separate, two DNA double helixes, matching bases pair up, and DNA double helixes. D DNA double helixes strand separate, two DNA double helixes, and the matching bases pair up. And ready? Pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer is B. First, we have one DNA double helix that the strands separate. We have a matching base pair up, and then we have two. And that's the only one that gives that correct order. Here it starts with two, which is false. Here it starts with strand separating, which is false. First, we have, have to have our DNA. In this case, what's false is matching base is at the end. It should be in the middle somewhere. So that's false as well. So the correct answer is B. Next one is how are new alias formed? B, by crossing over during meiosis. B, cloning a new variety in our population. E, my mutation in DNA of a gene. D, by production of a new phenotype of the same DNA. Pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer is C. A is wrong because crossing over changes the It gives you more variety. It doesn't change the actual allele. We can't form an allele doing crossing over. We can only, we can only shovel them around. B is wrong because cloning doesn't produce anything new. We just copy the same one over and over again. D is wrong because if we have the same DNA and we get new phenotype from that, that's not new alleles being formed. That might be the environment change and making a new phenotype appear, but that wouldn't be the change of the DNA itself. It would still have the same DNA. So mutations do actually lead to new alleles. So C is correct. Next, last question. The following event occurs after DNA is subjected to radiation. The events are listed in no specific order. P, change in protein structure. Q, change in polypeptide sequence. R, change in cell activity. S, S mutations. S is mutations. And the question is, what is the correct sequence? And these are your sequences. When ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct question answer for this one is B. We start with a mutation. A mutation leads to a change in the polypeptide sequence. That change in polypeptide sequence leads to change in protein structure. And that change in protein structure leads to a change in selectivity. So this is right and the other ones are all wrong. 
So hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.